In this lesson, we're talking about jazz guitar extended chords. I'm Jared from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This video is part of a series that I've been doing for a while that is all about mastering chords and harmony on the guitar from the ground up, from beginner to advanced. We're pretty far along here in the advanced stage, and today we're talking about adding extensions to simple jazz chords. Because this is part of a series, this lesson does build on specifically two previous lessons, but you can watch it on its own as well. By itself, this video will just straight up show you the shapes that you need for all the most common jazz chords that use extensions, like chords that have sevens as well as nines, as well as elevens or thirteens or combinations of these things. So we're going to go through to decode, you know, what's your go-to option for any time you see one of these types of chords. We're going to take the shell voicings that I talked all about two videos ago. Highly recommend that video. And then my last video was on the theory of extensions, nines, elevens, thirteens. What does that mean? How do we build them? So if you're already good on those two things, we're just combining those two things. We're taking shell voicings and we are adding extensions to them. And I'm going to recommend to you my philosophy on having specifically a go-to kind of single option for any type of jazz chord that has an extension before you start worrying about all the other possibilities and substitutions and inversions and many, many voicings and all that. And you'll see why it's, uh, it works really well. I like to keep things simple, but methodical is exactly what we're going to do in this lesson. And with this approach, we're also going to be able to add the fives of chords. The shell voicings don't include the fifth of a chord, so we can add those as well. And we need to because we need to address an altered five chord when a five is flat, when a five is sharp. It's going to be the same approach that we're taking when we're adding extensions. So we're going to take every type of extension, flat nine, nine, sharp nine, eleven, sharp eleven, flat thirteen, thirteen, and also fives, flat five and sharp five, and also natural five. And then we're going to take each chord type and we're just going to say, hmm, does can we add each type of extension to this chord type. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the formula here, uh, which is that we're taking our shell voicings. And if you know what those are, great. You don't have to have them all perfectly memorized. If you're confused or you want to go deep on those, two videos ago is, is the place to get that info. We're just going to take each shell voicing, and then if we need to add a nine, any kind of nine, we're going to play our fifth string rooted shell voicing, our shell voicing where the root is on the fifth string. And if we need to add anything else, we are going to play the shell voicing with the root on the sixth string. So if it has an 11, sharp 11, 13, any kind of 13, or 5, or altered 5, those are all going to be shell voicings rooted off the sixth string with those added on top, and anything with a 9 is a shell voicing rooted off the fifth string. So let's just dive in here with major 7 as our first chord type, and we say we want to add a 9 to major 7. I'm going to go ahead and play everything on the C root here. So here's our shell voicing for C, and then that's where we add a 9. We're not going to add a flat 9 or a sharp 9 to the major 7, and the reason why is just because of the common scales that we're using in our tonal language doesn't create that structure. Again, theoretically you could, but it would have to come from what might be called a synthetic scale. It exists theoretically and you could play with it, but is not in common practice, certainly, in music that we hear and use and, and play, so not practical. So therefore a major 7 with a 9 is, a, is that voicing, and that is straight up the most common, ubiquitous, useful major 7 shape with a 9. If you ask any guitarist, play me E flat major 9, uh, very likely their hands would jump to this. So I'm giving you these voicings that are the go-to for most people, and then from there, there are many other ways. Indeed, you can play any chord type. Okay, what if we want to add 11 to a major 7 chord? Well, everything else is going to be over here rooted off the 6th string, so I'm going to take my major 7 shell voicing, and we cannot add, we can, but uh, you can hear it here, a natural 11 on a major 7 chord is not something that is used, usually not recommended. Sometimes when we do these artificially altered chords that aren't in common practice, and we're like, well, why does this not exist? Why do people not do that? Very often it's because that actually creates a different chord type. So we might see some of those as we go along. For example, like a minor 6 chord. I did a video all about 6 chords recently, um, and I said a minor 6 chord is a minor triad with a major 6. And some question, a question that comes up sometimes is, well, why can't a minor triad have a flat 6 on it? So like a minor triad with a flat 6. Well, you can. And so yeah, it exists, but it, it actually is and, and functions as. It's straight up the notes of a first inversion major 7 chord. And it's, it sounds like that too. So sometimes when we start moving things around, it just becomes something else. And you can say it's theoretically a minor chord with a flat 6, uh, but really it's just 
major seven chord with first inversion. Don't worry about the details of what I meant there. I'm just saying all of that so I can from now on in this video say when something comes up that doesn't isn't really used or doesn't really exist, I'm just gonna say we don't get that. You know, we don't get an 11 with the major seven chord because it's either not common, not practical, not useful for you, or straight up doesn't exist because it actually creates another type of chord. So now we'll be able to really just go through and have fun with the with the options that are useful. Major seven sharp 11, beautiful chord, absolutely. So um, how do I know that sharp 11? Well, in this series, I talked on and on about counting with the major scale and being able to find scale degrees and chord tones with the scale by counting. So if I had to, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, sharp eleven. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, sharp eleven. It's just what exists, it's just where it lines up, lines up from the root if you count like that. The last video I did on extensions is where I talk specifically about counting and keeping the numbers going to eight, nine, ten, eleven, and finding things that way. So very cool. Major seven uh, with a thirteen would just be called a major thirteen chord. So this is where that thirteen is the same note as six but you call it 13 because it's on top of a major seven chord. So it has a seven and a three and a 13. Ah, beautiful. If we wanna add the five, the five is right here for us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, it's up there. So major seven sharp five is a chord type that exists. That is the third chord in melodic and harmonic minor. If you build chords with those scales, and I have two videos coming out soon on uh, the theory of the chords through those two scales, major seven, sharp five. So I kind of set up the foundation here. Let's go through the rest of these chords. Let's do major six. If we add a nine to major six, absolutely. This would be called uh, C six nine. A six chord with a nine. Gorgeous, okay? Six chord uh, with an 11 or sharp 11? You can. You can add a sharp 11 to the six chord. That would be that. Not gonna be that common that you see that on a, on a lead sheet or anything, but you can do that. And then adding the five. And you wouldn't add a 13 because you already have the six. Okay, let's do dominant seven next. Dominant seven is a free for all. We get almost everything with it. It's, it's really fun. We can add a flat nine to it. You can bar your first finger to get that flat nine there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, flat nine. Okay, so you can get that. And, or you can definitely play on the tips of your fingers instead by just rearranging. Okay, so flat nine, definitely C nine, which is C seven with a natural nine. C seven sharp nine exists. We don't get a sharp, we don't get a natural 11. So we're gonna go up to, C7 sharp 11. Now, if you saw a C7 flat five, this would be the same voicing. That would be your go-to voicing. Sharp 11 and flat five are in harmonic equivalence. They are the same pitch, but they represent different things. So this shape is what you're gonna use for dominant seven flat five, as well as dominant seven sharp 11. The difference is the implication of what other notes are there. If this is called dominant seven sharp 11, well then the five exists there. And a melodic player, could play that. So that, that really changes kind of the uh, melodic options. If it's flat five, you actually, that natural five's not gonna be there because it's flat five. So that means that it's gonna be coming from a very, very different sound. Okay, so Pretty, pretty much worlds apart there, uh, but yet this voicing is, is the same um, either way. If you wanna add the natural five, you're gonna play this voicing. If you're gonna add the sharp five or flat 13, same voicing for both those. Again, the implication is if it's called sharp five, it means the natural five is not there. If it's called flat 13, then the natural five is next to it. Totally different scales that those chords come from, uh, but this voicing will be the same. So sharp five or flat 13, and then C7 13 in this case that shape. Let's do minor seven next. Uh, minor seven with a flat nine is kind of a, nowadays a modern sound that is used sometimes, but traditionally in kind of functional harmony, uh, pretty much considered not a chord. Um, I rather like it. It's, it's kind of a modal chord uh, that is used now. So minor seven with a flat nine, I'm gonna include in the list here just to be aware of. Um, minor seven with a natural nine, absolutely beautiful. Okay, we can't do sharp nine on minor seven because that's the same note as the flat three, which the chord already has. Minor 11 chord, that's a minor seven chord with 11. Ooh, 
just gorgeous. Anytime you see a minor seven chord, you can turn it into a minor 11 chord. Um, that's always gonna be there. Uh, minor seven flat five is already just a half diminished chord, and that's just a typical chord type. Minor seven with a five, There's a lot of ways to play this. You can bar or all tips of fingers or do this common way of playing the root with your middle finger and barring with your uh, third finger. And then we're not gonna get a flat 13. Uh, you can do a minor seven 13 chord though. I, I like that chord. It's basically a minor six chord. You just have the seven in there as well. For the half diminished chord, we're not gonna add any extensions. Um, we're just going to add um, our flat five over here. That just fills out the chord because our shell voicing version didn't use the five at all. So the flat five of that chord really helps the sound of it. Obviously sound like half diminished. Otherwise, it's hard to know if that's supposed to be there or not. So no extensions that we need there, though you can do the um, minor 11 kind of voicing and play between those two. Let's do dominant seven sus four. There's that shell voicing. You can totally add the flat nine. Um, beautiful chord there. I love the sus four with the nine. It's just these these notes all on one fret, and I'm plucking the middle four strings. You can add that top note too, and it completes the chord with the five. But I'm uh, hybrid picking with just the middle strings here. You cannot have a sus four with a sharp 11. Here's that natural five. You can have flat 13 or 13 with those. And let's do minor six. Pretty much the only extension you're gonna add for minor six is the nine. Ah, oh, just a gorgeous chord. Very rich. And then over here, you'd add the five. So add the nine off of the fifth string root, just the five here. For the minor major seven chord, it's a minor chord with a major seven. You can add a nine. That would be our shape there. And up here, I would just add the five. And the last chord type we're gonna cover is diminished seven. We're not gonna add an extension or anything when we're root off the fifth string and off the sixth string. Just go ahead and add the flat five if you wanna complete the chord um, and add more color to it. When you do that and if you bar with your first finger, you can add your pinky to have a flat 13 in there. That's actually very common as a kind of a melodic motion or a melody note during this chord. So what if you want to add two extensions at once, like C7, flat 9, flat 13? Well, still, I just recommend having these go-to options and just bouncing between them. It just gives you somewhere to move. It's quite nice. You can, you can work on voicings later that include um, multiple extensions, multiple notes. I'm going to get into that in a future video with um, rootless voicings, where we take the root away so we can add more, even more color on top. But for now, use these, use these options. You have your shell voicing. Then you have flat nine, C7 flat nine over here, and C7 flat 13 over here. All those are interchangeable, it's pretty cool. So here are some examples of some of these being used, and then we're gonna put it to the test by looking at a, at a lead sheet and playing around with it. Uh, dominant seven sharp nine is sometimes called the Jimi Hendrix chord because he used it so much, and like Purple Haze. Here's an example of a couple extensions being used in a melodic way with the song You've Got a Friend in Me. We got an E flat major triad, B7 sharp five or B7 flat 13, and then E flat nine, that's E flat seven with a nine. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. So I really like that example because it uh, shows this kind of melodic purpose of using those extensions, and these are the exact voicings that we're learning here. Let's jump to the iRoll Pro app and test this out. I pulled up blue and green here, the Miles Davis tune. Gorgeous, colorful uh, chords here with a few extensions. We have a G minor six. I'm gonna add a nine to that, just to make it even more colorful. Then we got A7 sharp nine. Beautiful, we have D minor seven. I'm gonna add an 11 to that. And then D flat seven. And then C7, I'll add an 11 to that as well. Then we got F7, I'll add a nine to that. And then B flat, major seven, sharp 11. It's kind of the surprise sound there. A7 sharp nine, D minor six. I like adding a nine to those. Oh, so fun. All right, I'm gonna pull up another random tune here. I pulled up this Bill Evans tune. I'm just gonna play the exact chords it asks for. I'm not gonna add extensions unless it asks for them. So we got B flat major seven. I'm gonna go ahead and add the five on top of our shell voicing. E seven sus flat nine. Not super common that you'll see that. Then E seven with a sharp nine. 
or I can jump over here to E7, sharp five. A minor seven, I'm gonna add the five. D7, sharp five. D7, shell voicing, sharp five. G half diminished, just as is. C7, sharp five, or C7, sharp nine. C minor seven with a five. F7 with a sharp five over here. F minor seven. B flat seven sharp five. E flat minor seven. So you get the point. You see that we can add a lot of depth and, and richness and texture to these chords. The shell voicings give us everything we need, the, the essential sound of, of any crazy chord type. And then just this one extra added note gives us this whole other dimension to play with. And these are the common guitar voicing. So usually people will go about kind of just memorizing the shapes, but we've done it in this way now where we're kind of building on the theory, understanding where the extensions come from, understanding the shell voicing idea, and then having that as a kind of a backup go-to or using it as a more essential sound and then adding the extension on top when we want to. The thing that still might be kind of confusing is when can you take liberties? When can you just add a certain type of extension? Uh, for now, take one of two options. Just don't and just play kind of the pure chord, add the five if you want to, or just play the shell voicing. And then the main point of this is that you now have, if an option comes up where you want to specifically play the nine or someone asks for that chord sound or it's on a lead sheet or whatever, then you have something that you can do confidently. So I want you to have with every type of extension somewhere where you know how to play it. And that's what you have here. So option one is to just play exactly kind of the strict version of it. Option two is to not worry about if you're, the liberties you're taking are correct or not. Because technically you can do anything. If, it, if Even if you see C9, you can just make it C sharp nine. You know, if you like the sound, go for it. And, and that's a little harder for us to wrap our heads around sometimes, but that's your other option to just totally be be creative and what's the worst that can happen it's going to be a little crunchy right or you learn from it and say actually i don't like that but you also might stumble on something that you really like so um you can add any extension to any chord anytime and your ears and your taste are the barometer for whether or not you want to do that again or, or if it felt good to you and so that's really the, the fun path but but harder because there aren't these rules and constraints where you can say, oh, I know exactly what to do. So you have the, I know exactly what to do version. That's very comforting. I want you to get really used to that and, and feel confident in that. And then I do want you to, if you can, start to just play around, just start adding extensions to things. Yes, if you do just do that loosely like that, you are sometimes going to add an extension to something that technically comes from a different scale than maybe the harmony was intending, but that's part of experimenting. So take your time, of course, no rush with this, just kind of soak it in and definitely just have fun with it. My next video is going to be about chromatic guitar chords, that is chords that are outside of a key. It's not going to be jazz specific, just the idea of chords that go outside of a key and the theory of it and where that comes from and uh, some pop popular songs actually that use examples of that. It's going to be a fun lesson. That'll be next week coming out. Can't wait to see you there. Take care, happy practicing, and thanks so much.